So you want to build an awesome model of a river but don't know where to start? This tutorial will take you through the process step by step with nothing right through to a completed diorama at the end. It can sometimes look complicated but by systematically going through the process one stage at a time you'll soon realize building a model like this is achievable for even the beginner modeler. Let's not waste any more time and get started building. The first step is a good plan. I'll usually use photos for reference when designing the scene. Once I have an idea of what the scene will look like, I start creating a paper template of the river. It doesn't have to be your best artwork, rather it's just a rough sketch to give you an idea. The diorama is only quite small, measuring about 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters, and the base is made using extruded polystyrene, which is commonly used for home insulation. I find this works great as the base material, as it's quite rigid and a strong foam. To build up the landforms above the base layer, I use expanded polystyrene. This foam is a lot softer and much easier to cut with the hot wire foam tools. Once the template has been cut out, it's then transferred onto the white foam with a felt tip marker. To cut the foam, I'm using a hot knife tool from the hot wire foam factory. These tools make light work of cutting through this foam and I'm able to get very clean, precise cuts without making a huge mess. I just roughly cut out the shape I need and I create a shallow slope that leads down to the river. For the most part, the foam will be covered in sculptor mold, so all we really need is the general shape of the bank to be cut out. Everything is fixed together with styro goo. I first rough up the surface of the foam to ensure the glue gets a nice strong bond. Once everything's in place, I weigh it down as the glue dries. The bank of the river is sculpted using Sculptor Mold or a similar product. Here I'm using Sculpted Modeling Mix from Officeworks in Australia. It gets mixed up to a thick consistency and applied across the entire model. It has about a 15 minute working time and I continue to manipulate it along the banks to get the desired look and I continually smoothen it out as it starts to set ensuring that any areas where I intend to have roads is as smooth as I can get it before it begins to set. I do the same for the riverbed. Continue to work it as it sets to get it as smooth as you can. The thickness of the riverbed layer will need to be at least 3 to 5 millimeters thick. This is because the resin we'll be using for the water can get quite hot after the initial pour and if there's not enough insulation between the resin and the foam, it can cause the foam to melt and shrink. And this isn't my first attempt at this diorama. On the first try, I had a very thin layer of plaster that was the barrier between the foam and the river. However, it wasn't enough. The water product can get quite hot as it cures, especially when poured to be a deep river, which may cause the foam to shrink. And if those gases emanate up through the resin, it will cause it to cure too fast and unevenly. If you have no choice but to pour directly onto the foam, make sure to do it in multiple thin layers instead of one thick layer. Because this is a small diorama, I'm tidying up the edges more for aesthetics than anything else but this will also help when it comes time to seal the edges of the river to prevent the resin from escaping. The riverbed is further sealed with Woodland Scenics Flex Paste. It gets applied quite liberally over anywhere that deep pore water resin will be added. It's possible for there to be small holes in the plaster layer which may allow the resin to escape and this layer of flex paste helps seal all those small gaps and holes. I use a stippling motion to hide any brush strokes. All up I applied three thick layers of flex paste onto the riverbed and to the edges of the diorama. My base colour for the riverbed and the road surfaces is Joe Sonia's Fawn. It will mostly be covered by dirt texture and the actual riverbed will be airbrushed with a much darker brown, however this will hide any white areas in case we miss a spot. To model the bank I'm using ordinary dirt, nothing special. 
just what I could find outside the garage door. Just try to find a nice dry patch that doesn't have too much grass or twigs. Some of the larger rocks and bits of leaves or twigs can be removed now, but we'll get the rest once we start to sift the dirt. It first gets sifted into two grades, a fine grade and a coarse grade. This is where most of the large rocks, twigs and leaves can be removed from the coarse grade and the fine grade falls through the wire screen. I then have three different types of dirt. One is a mix of fine and coarse together, the other is coarse only and the last is fine dirt only. The dirt as it is is much too dark so to lighten it I add a beige coloured grout until I get the desired colour. I do this to all three variations of the dirt so they all match. Here you can see the difference in colour after the grout has been added to the dirt. To fix the dirt in place along the bank I use a textured paste from Vallejo. This is an earth brown texture. It gets applied in quite a thick layer. This will enable the large rocks in our dirt mixture to become embedded into the textured paint without falling to the bottom. The dirt can then be liberally applied across the embankment, allowing the dirt to pile up right to the top. A brush may be needed to brush dirt up under the overhanging sections of the bank. After it's had some time to dry, the excess is carefully brushed away. I try to make sure the larger rocks don't get brushed away and in bare spots I'll push some larger bits of dirt back in until there's a nice variation of texture along the bank. The excess dirt is collected as it will be used again later on the model. This layer of dirt is fixed in position by first misting the area with isopropyl alcohol and then once thoroughly damp I mist the area with a scenic glue. This glue mixture is homemade using one part Mod Podge mat and three parts water with a few drops of dish soap. Now that layer is mostly dry, I move on to adding dirt texture across the rest of the diorama. The textured paint is used here, albeit a much thinner layer compared to how we applied it on the bank and while it's still wet, a layer of dirt is applied. This time I apply patches of dirt using the fine and coarse mixture randomly across the wet areas of paint and then to blend all that together I apply the fine dirt through a stocking over the top. The road areas are covered with another fine dirt texture however it's much lighter and has a more yellowish hue. This all gets sealed with an initial layer of isopropyl alcohol and scenic glue. Now this was a bit of an afterthought although the method works quite well. I wanted some muddy wheel tracks leading down to the river so I used some air drying modelling clay along the ramp down to the river. Using a bush jeep I was able to press the wheels into the clay and roll them up and down to create the desired effect. The clay shrinks a little as it dries, but we'll be able to hide the edges with dirt. The wheel tracks are painted burnt umber and then dry brushed with Vallejo light mud to highlight the tire tread detail. The remaining white areas are painted with Joe Sonia's fawn and then the dirt texture is applied over the top. Before fixing the dirt with the glue, I used a straw to gently blow away the loose dirt from the wheel tracks. Now for the riverbed. I'm using Vallejo German Camouflage Black Brown and it gets applied using an airbrush. I use printer paper to mask the bank so I don't get paint all over the diorama and on areas where I don't want it. It is possible to apply the colour with a brush, however I find the smooth transition of colour you get using an airbrush is hard to beat. A variety of trees were used. Some of the Woodland Scenics tree armatures as shown in terrific trees using Woodland Scenics armatures. As well as super tree material also shown in a video making realistic trees using sea foam. 
others are simply good looking twigs found outside while walking. With a bit of polyfiber, followed by a layer of glue, and some Woodland Scenics coarse foam, a second layer of glue, a sprinkling of knock medium green leaves, and finally, a misting of matte varnish to seal it all in place, you'll have yourself a great looking tree. I test the position of each tree before boring a small hole into the ground and loosely placing the tree into the scene. To ensure each tree gets returned to the same spot, I make some tiny numbered flags with corresponding spots on the foam. When one tree is removed, it's replaced with a flag and that tree gets placed in the appropriate spot on the foam board. Now for the major transformation, adding grass. For this I'm going to be using the Knock Grassmaster 2.0 along with some Knock Grass Glue and Knock 6mm Grass Fibres. To get the colour I wanted for this scene, I ended up mixing about a 50-50 mix of Knock Wildgrass Meadow and Knock Wildgrass Beige. Once the grass has been thoroughly mixed, I get some glue ready to go and I fill the static grass hopper with the grass. Apply glue randomly across the diorama. I only work in small sections at a time to avoid having areas of the glue drying before the grass is applied. Excess is removed by turning the diorama upside down or a vacuum with a stocking attached to catch the loose fibres also works well for removing excess grass. Some additional areas of smaller 2mm grass was used around the edges of the road as well. A range of Woodland Scenics foams was used to add texture. One of my favourite things to add however is actual dried up leaves that have been put through a blender. And they are perfect for adding around the base of trees and along paths. Simply sprinkle layers of colour across the model in random pattern to simulate low lying weeds and bushes. The centre of the road is also detailed with the leaf texture. Once you finish laying down the different ground foams and textures, I go over the area with a brush and dust away any bits of leaf or foam from unwanted areas, especially the riverbed. And just like we did with the other layers, I mist it with alcohol and seal with scenic glue. One of the most eye-catching details on this model are the roots along the riverbank. These are made using actual roots. Any type of plant with a fine root structure will work. For me, I found grass roots to do the job. I dig up more than I need so I've got plenty to choose from, and once they have dried out over a few days, they are ready to use. The excess grass is trimmed from the top, and the remaining roots are pruned and then glued onto the model. A small amount of Helmar Super Tac Adhesive worked well for this. Don't be afraid to add singular root sections as well. They don't all need to be neat bunches. We're almost ready to add water. To dam the river, I use a good quality masking tape to run around the perimeter of the exposed river edges. Once in place, I make sure to give it a good rubbing ensuring the tape is thoroughly stuck to the edges. Next, excess tape is trimmed away. And finally, the edge of the tape is sealed by applying a bead of wood glue along the join. So far I haven't had any leaks using this technique and it's very easy to remove once the water has cured. Before pouring the water, I first attach any of the small details that will be submerged to the riverbed, like the crocodile and this trolley. The details are glued to the riverbed so that once the water is poured, they don't float to the top. A lot of the fine details added to this scene were made with the help of the Anycubic Photon 3D printer. It prints using a resin that is cured by a UV light. 3D designs can be made using a 3D modeling program or you can download thousands of free models uploaded by users from a number of different platforms like Thingiverse or My Mini Factory. Once the file is ready to go, I install the resin vat into the printer. Make sure all the screws are nice and tight so the print doesn't fail. Next, install the USB that has the file loaded. 
Turn the printer on and select the appropriate file to print. Now it's just a waiting game as the build plate slowly reveals our design. I have a five step process for post curing the 3D prints. Step one, remove the print from the build plate. Step two, submerge the print in isopropyl alcohol and gently agitate the alcohol to wash the excess uncured resin from the model. Step three, rinse the print in the second container of alcohol to further clean the model, removing the rest of the resin. Step four, leave the model to dry for a few minutes as the alcohol evaporates. And finally, step five, place the model under a UV light for about 15 to 20 minutes to fully cure the model. Make sure to dispose of the paper towels and gloves carefully as the resin is a toxic substance in its uncured state. Model preparation is basically the same as most other injection molded models. The supports are removed and any imperfections are sanded away. After sanding I give the model a quick rinse under the tap water and then apply a layer of primer. I use the airbrush where I can to paint the models as it gives a very nice even application of paint. When it comes to painting the finer detail, I find mounting the model to the bench atop a skewer or something similar enables me to use one hand that holds the brush while the other hand acts as support preventing any shakes from ruining the paint job. It's not perfect and mistakes still happen, but this technique seems to give me the best results. Once you've finished, you'll be left with some fantastic looking models that are ready to be added to the scene. Pouring the water on a level surface is very important and using a tool like the Micromark Digital Level will make finding a surface that is sufficiently flat a very easy task. For the water I'm trying a new product from Woodland Scenics called Deep Pour Water. It's a two part resin and the first thing you'll need to do is read the instructions. There's not much to it but if you want the best results it's essential to go over the instructions. Measuring just how much you'll need is as easy as roughly estimating the length and width of the river. Next go on to the Woodland Scenics website and under the free apps tab you'll find a water volume estimator. Enter the details and depending on how accurate your measurements were, you'll be given a volume of water that will be required to fill the river. To improve mixing the two parts together, they get warmed in a tub of hot tap water for about 10 minutes. By using the volume guide we can see that we need 100 mils of water base and 50 mils of activator. Once the bottles have been sufficiently warmed, it's gently rotated and tipped back and forth to mix the contents before being poured in the amounts determined from the chart. The initial stirring process lasts for 5 minutes, followed by a 5 minute rest, and then lastly another 5 minutes of mixing. When mixing try to avoid introducing bubbles into the resin, and remember to scrape the edges to ensure all the resin is thoroughly mixed. When pouring I start in the middle of the river, and let the resin find its own level as it works its way to the edges. Stubborn bubbles can be teased with a spatula and popped, however most bubbles will pop on their own within the first 5 minutes after pouring. While the water cures, I place a container over the area to prevent dust and other particles landing on the surface. After about 24 hours, the water will be cured and we can remove the tape from the edges of the model. Ripples are added just like you've seen in previous tutorials. 
using the Mod Podge gloss and the airbrush. Only a small amount is needed and it gets applied with an old paintbrush. I work in small sections of about 5 centimeters at a time as the Mod Podge tends to dry quite quickly especially if it's only in a very thin layer. Once the initial layer has been added the airbrush is used with the air only to gently push the Mod Podge forward and create that ripple effect. Keep working along the river surface in small 5 cm increments until you cover the entire surface of the river. This process can be done with just the paintbrush, however using the airbrush to create the ripples gives a much more realistic result. And it also helps pop any bubbles left behind from the paintbrush. Once it's had time to dry, you're left with an amazing looking river surface. Now we can start adding our trees. Each tree gets returned to its corresponding flag. Depending on how even the terrain is around the tree base, some of the trunks may need to be trimmed so they blend a little better with the surrounding terrain. Just be very careful that you don't cut your fingers. Some tacky glue like Helmar Super Tack Glue is all you'll need to fix the trees into position. To help blend the gaps below the trunks you can add some of the blended leaves texture or some dirt texture to hide those gaps. It's sealed with a few drops of isopropyl alcohol and scenic glue. Additional bushes and shrubs can be added with Woodland Scenics fine leaf foliage. Break off a small branch and with a small drop of glue press it into the scenery. The static grass is usually enough to hold them straight. For larger pieces you may need to create a small hole for them to press into. Reeds are also made using some Woodland Scenics field grass. They are trimmed to an approximate size and glued to the edge of the river using tacky glue. They can be further trimmed to the desired height with small scissors once the glue is dry. The last little bit of water effects is done with some of the new Woodland Scenics water ripples. It's a thick paste type product that dries perfectly clear and it's perfect for adding puddles. It's also great for adding ripples to the river surface but I find I get slightly better results using Mod Podge and the airbrush. If I didn't have an airbrush I'd definitely use this product for the surface ripples. For adding the wheel tracks along the road I'm using some yellow ochre pastel and a soft brush. Slowly dust the pastel over the wheel tracks gradually building up the colour until you're happy. The more you brush over the tracks the more the pastel will blend in overall. To add the 3D details I use Detail Tack. After about 15 minutes it dries and remains tacky which means that once the figure is in place you can easily move the figure to a different location without causing damage to the diorama. Only a very small amount is needed to hold the details in place. Now all that's needed is some paint to frame the edges of the model and we're done. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you'd like to support the channel be sure to visit patreon.com and if you'd like to see more videos about model making be sure to go and check out Kathy Millett's YouTube channel. It's full of great tips, advice and techniques and is definitely worth watching. Cheers and thanks for watching.